I've never understood it. They say that God made human beings in his own image. So is God some kind of self-loathing, verbally abused, overweight, middle-aged, shame-riddled wreck or what? I mean, if we're all made in God's image, what the fuck is wrong with the way we look? I made you in my image. Now cut that thing off your dick. I made you in my image. Now don't you dare make me look at your ugly scalp. And most of all, of course, I made you in my image. Now cover up your naughty bits. The bits that are directly connected to your naughty bits. The parts that kind of remind me of your naughty bits. And the parts that remind me that you have naughty bits. Then cover those coverings with another covering. Because I modeled you after myself and I disgust me. People all over the world are dealing with this to varying degrees, of course, but I think we can all agree that women in Muslim-majority countries are getting way more than their fair share. So the women in moderate Muslim countries look at the fundamentalist countries and see them making it illegal for women to leave the house without looking like Jabba the Hutt in a ninja suit. So they're understandably hypersensitive to anybody overly concerned with their hemline. Which is why activists started sounding the alarm as soon as women in Kuala Lumpur started getting turned away from government buildings because their skirts were too short. This is a signal of a much larger movement toward conservatism that's leaving everyone in the country with a vagina, familiarity with Saudi Arabia, or both terrified. Now, obviously, when you say moderate Muslim country, you're grading on a curve because there's no reasonable scale where Malaysia falls on the progressive side. But as most of the Middle East would be happy to demonstrate, it could get a lot worse. And unfortunately, it looks like that's the direction they're going. Meanwhile, back in the U.S., we're fighting hard not to head in the same direction. You could reasonably argue that as a whole, our nation is improving in this department. But I'm willing to bet that if you're a woman in rural Texas, you haven't noticed. Throughout the South and the Midwest, local and state governments are hard at work dismantling women's rights, shutting down women's clinics, and enshrining patriarchy into law. Now, usually that's done with an air of head patting, a bit of, don't you worry, young lady, we big strong men know what's best for you, and they have a deep pocket full of patriarchal platitudes to justify it. But one of their favorite go-to arguments got a lot harder to justify this week thanks to a study from the University of California San Francisco School of Medicine. The survey followed more than 600 women who had abortions from 30 different facilities for three years. Along the way, researchers assessed how the subjects felt about the choice they'd made to terminate the pregnancy. The final result? More than 90% of the women thought it was the right decision in both the short term and the long term. Anti-abortion activists love to paint the picture of post-abortion women drowning in regret for the rest of their lives. But the numbers don't bear it out at all. And now that there's scientific data that disproves that cliché, I'm sure they'll stop using it altogether. Now, when it comes to regretting not aborting a fetus, well, you'll have to ask Ken Ham's mom about that. That's right, full-time child de-educator and part-time Bill Nye's bitch, Ken Ham has wiggled his way into this segment this week with a blog post explaining why childbirth is painful. And as it turns out, it has nothing to do with the fact that vaginas aren't baby head-sized. It's hardly worth mentioning because a fucking course, it's because of the snake and the apple and the rib lady, not the pelvis that was originally designed for walking on all fours, or the expanded cranium needed to accommodate a human brain. It's the fucking snake. And that's nothing new. But I wanted to bring it up because Ken Ham so perfectly encapsulates all the reasons I hate religion in this one Facebook status sized blog post. Because what he's actually saying is, if you just stop finding the right answers, our wrong answers wouldn't look as stupid. So I propose a scientific test, Ken. We're going to implant a marble in your dick and let you piss it out. If it doesn't hurt, you're right and women are God-cursed. If it does hurt, you're wrong and objects passing through orifices significantly smaller than those objects is just painful. I'm thinking we'll need a couple dozen trials for a large enough sample size. And with that lovely mental image, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.